mannequin. Okay. So, look at our squirrel. And we're going to move the camera in closer in a few minutes. I just want to show you. Mm -hmm. so you, can, you can see that his head is roughly the size of, a, of one cotton ball. Yes. It just needs to be pinched. But I'm going to take this square here, and that's what his head's going to be made out of. The squirrel face. And it's going to be filled in with clay, so that we can do that. And his body is about the size of three to four cotton balls. And that's four. Broken the shoulder down to there. The neck is going to be on a wire. And it's going to be fed through there, and then we're going to build up the neck with stuffing. Okay. So, we're going to sew. <laughs> So are you ready to start sewing? I am ready to learn to sew. All right. I need it. I rip enough of my pants. <laughs> We're going to make his head first. So, as stated before, his head is about the size of one cotton ball, only it has to be tapered. Mm -hmm. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to cut this square. You can see okay where you're sitting? Yes, I can. Okay. So this is going to be his nose, where it's pointed. Okay. And I'm going to just take the cotton ball. Like these are the cotton balls that kind of go like a cinnamon roll. I'm not <laughs> sure why. That's just how they were. So I am going to get more of these. I can't remember exactly which Dollarama I was in, but I have the bag. So I have the bag still, so I can figure that out. And I'm going to pinch it and fold it over. And that makes like a little nose. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put that this side down. And this is going to be a lot smaller than his actual head is because we're going to fill him with clay. Should have thread the needle first. I'll show you how to do the face and then you can sew on the body. Because there's a there's a trick to getting the point right in his face. And I'll show you that. Okay. Is it easier to sew the body? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot easier to... Because you don't need the fine-tuned details. But I'll be showing you how to do the stitch for his body. So I should have used the thinner stuff on this. So it really doesn't look like much now, it just looks like a cotton ball wrapped in, in um, fill batting. Mm -hmm. Push that up a bit. From what I see, what you've done, so we're gonna turn it into something. Yep. So this is about the length from there. You can see on this side, it looks it has more of that point, mm -hmm. which is similar to what his little face is. It's got that point there. So no one's ever going to see this, so it doesn't really have to be pretty. You can use any color you want under there. Like you can use old rags and sew this up. Like you don't have to have the, the polyfill batting. It's just that I have polyfill batting. So. It's the better stuff to have, and that's the way we should do it. Yeah. So this is the back of his neck. I'm just going to wrap this in your fingers like this and pull mm -hmm. down, wrap up, and then tie a knot. But not a very tight knot because you're going to going to be putting a wire through there later. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to snip this off. 
I'm going to use the smaller stuff for the finer detailing of the nose. and get the thread off. Yeah, so his nose looks kind of square. So if you wanted to add something that wasn't part of the animal, that's mm -hmm. how you do it. Well, this part, like this, is the underlaying part of it. Like this is, mm -hmm. this is going to replace this. Yes, I mean. So if you yeah. wanted to do something different, like if you were doing a jackalope, you would be putting the horns in incisions in the in the cape and affixing it to the to that. Okay. But I don't do the rogue, so I, that's one thing that I just don't know a lot about doing. It's pretty simple, because you're just sewing pieces together, but I'm not really into rogue taxidermy. No, I mean, I was just, there was the brains out, I guess. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're running a stitch around there, just poking in and poking out. And you'll see why in a minute. This is how we're going to get him to keep a nice pointy nose. Because we want this to be about the shape of his skull. Alright, so that's stitched all the way around, like that. Mm -hmm. You just take the two ends and you pull them, and that makes that point a bit. So I'm just going to tie this so it keeps that initial... It's like drawstring and jogging pants, how when you pull on the ends, it, it sinks it through. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same thing. Okay. So you just keep going around it. I don't know why that's having such a hard time going through that. I must be digging into the cotton. and get smaller. But mm -hmm. you can also cheat and just wrap it like this. <laughs> it, it works just as well. It's probably faster. Just that that's what Which I've done. Better. Which is better. It just, it really depends on what you feel like doing at the time. Because sometimes my fingers don't want to work like they should. Because the arthritis in them, so. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I actually prefer to just bind it. Okay. So that's taking on a little bit of a squirrel shape to the face. And that's the basic shape of a squirrel head, even though it kind of looks... I'm not sure what it is. It's like 
that weird creature from that 80s cartoon, the raccoons, whatever he was, that serial sneer guy, with that weird nose, <laughs> it kind of looks like that. <laughs> I don't remember that one. You're probably lucky. Oh. I'm young, I'm from the 90s. It's true. You're still airing it in, like, 95. They, were st they still had it on the TV. Oh, so, I like, you may have seen it. Your brother might know it. Alright, so, this is going to be his spine. Okay. I used a thinner snare wire when I did Shasta, and I found that it just, it was okay, but I had to add more wire to her to make her, her spine more structurally sound. Mm-hmm. You gotta have a good spine. Yeah. Mine's all right, so. Squirrel's gotta have a good one. Mm. I don't even know if this is going to poke through or not. Alright, it's going, but very slowly. Right, it's not going into the cotton ball, so I have to maneuver it around it. So it'll be like it's going under his chin, but that's okay. That's why we didn't want this too tight, because we might have to loosen it out. So the spine doesn't necessarily have to be straight? Well, it should be straight, but it doesn't necessarily have to be straight through the skull part. It's ideal if it does, but if it doesn't want to go, it doesn't want to go. Okay. So we're not going to worry too much if it doesn't want to, because this is a much thicker wire than what I used on Shasta. So, if you have your a wire for the neck, does that mean you can? Move the neck around, maybe? Only when it's first mounted, because the skin's going to dry, it's going to be like a rawhide. It's going to be a hard mount. Which means it's going to, once it's in its pose, it's in its pose. You can't change it after it's dried. Okay, that makes sense. Because, yeah, and the skin would essentially turn into leather. Yeah. Well, it's even harder than leather. It's like rawhide. Like you've given, um, have you given Rocky rawhide bones before? Uh, I think we did, but he couldn't eat one. But it's pretty much that same material. Should be through the center of it though. So that's got it that there. And the the length of the wire is approximately the length of the squirrel? Yeah. Minus a little bit for the tail. Because there's um this wire isn't small enough to go through the whole tail. So we're gonna be using the smaller snare wire for that. So that's the basic head shape. It actually kind of looks like a squirrel's head. It does. So, we want to anchor this into his nose. These are round nose pliers. You don't know, yep. Yeah. Just take it at a 
certain point mm -hmm. and round it around. Okay. And that makes a hook. Mm -hmm. So this hook is going to be embedded into the tip of the nose. Push the cotton in. That sits like this. See how it's hooked in there like a fish hook? Mm -hmm. And then take the flat pliers and squeeze, and squeeze it. it down. And then once we do his nose, here we his nose we for the curve. So you're supposed to squeeze that right together? The the ends of the wire? Yeah, because you want them to pinch. And that will hold this on as well. Because the fabric is now pinched like a staple in the... Okay, so you want to make the hook and then... Yeah. Pretty much secure the cotton on there with the hook. Yeah. Because okay. this is going to be his, his... This is this is his head, and this is his spine going down through. Mm -hmm. So what position do you want him to be in? Do, do you want him standing? Do you want him to be climbing the wall? I think so he can... Probably just standing. Okay, so like how I did Shasta then? Yeah. Okay. Kind of so he can sit on top of the TV. Alright. So he can sit and watch you watch television. Right. So, you gotta make this wire the shape of him. So he's pretty much in a standing position already. Like that. And he's got a little bit of a curve, so it could be kind of hunched. Mm -hmm. And there's that curve of the skull. Just put your thumb under there and move that wire, and that makes that curve. The thing but wire you can always straighten it if you don't get it right the first couple tries. Mm -hmm. So this would go pretty far up his tail. But it's too big for the tail. The further ends of the tail we could do that through the this part of the tail to about here and his little tail is gonna be up like that. Because when squirrels are sitting all nice and happy in the trees it's their little tails are up and they're all excited. Mm -hmm. Squirrels are very happy animals. So for his neck we're going to use these, which are cosmetic gauzes mm -hmm. for applying makeup. Just kind of fold it over a couple times like that. So that's pretty much all he needs for a neck because he doesn't really have a big neck to begin with. Alright, so once I get the neck sewed, we'll start on the body and you can sew that. Because you gotta learn how to do the, the mm -hmm. stitches for his for his belly, so we'll practice that stitch while we do the mannequin. Not yet, but I will. My mind is on squirrels. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I'm just going to finish attaching this to the head, and then we'll come back when it's time for the body. I'm going to show you the stitch that you have to do on his hide. You don't have to do this for the mannequin because you're not going to see it. It doesn't have to be fancy. Okay. So we're going to start up here. Okay. Now, because this is like his skin fold, right? You go under it, up. Long string. All right. So once you're there, there'd be a corresponding gap, and you go in, up, over, and loop them down. It's like you're making an X. Okay. Because when you bring this down under, you'd go down like this back into that skin flap. And you always work from the inside poking out. And then you'd go down for the skin flap that way. So I'll get you to do a couple of those. Don't be scared to pull it fast through because you're not going to rip it. You want to make sure your stitches are nice and tight before you stick the next one in. Yeah, just pull it taut like that. Okay. Oh, is that a problem? Nope, that's a problem. That's not a problem on the mannequin. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the video and let you finish st stitching that up. Okay. And we'll come back when you're finished with that.